Hello everyone. Welcome to Signing the Word. Today's title is Wonderful Word. This is beautiful. This is the wonderful word. Amen. Our life is from the word. How? Because God spoke it. He spoke into everything with his words. There are many, many things that have come about just because of people's words and thoughts. Amen. So we're going to talk about the wonderful word of life. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. You go ahead and read it while I'll drink my coffee. It says, let no corrupt meaning filth or not honest communication proceed out of your mouth I know that you hearing people can speak but as deaf people we speak with our hands and that's the same exact thing Meaning, proceed out of your thoughts, either from your mouth or your hands. And those thoughts show who you are. So wherever you are, whoever you meet, when you communicate and you're talking or you're signing, whatever your, your thoughts are, that shows your true heart. That shows who you are. So it says, so let no corrupt, meaning the word of God is pure. And he's telling you, let no corrupt communication So be careful with your words with people and who you actually communicate to. It could be, you know, negative or filth. You don't want that to become part of you. Let's look at this other verse that supports this as well. Colossians chapter 3, verse 8. It says, but now ye also... Put off all these. And what are these? Anger, wrath, malice, meaning you want to do evil directly to someone to get revenge or to get back. You want to take evil actions. Blasphemy. Filthy communication. Out of your mouth. So it's saying, you know, put these away. Push these away. Those are not wonderful words. Those are not wonderful actions. There's a negative. So put them away. And this is a letter to the church. He's not, a letter, he's not writing a letter to the world. He's writing a letter to the church. Who loves God. Yes, we're, we're part of the church, but we're still human. And we want the world to come. But this is the letter to the church, telling them exactly how to behave and to do. Right. 
and he's saying, you know, don't let this happen. Put this stuff aside. Don't be speaking this way. Let's go back. The word of God is very powerful. God shows that there's no limit. He's all powerful. Praise God. When he spoke, he created the heavens and the earth just by his words. He didn't have to create with his hands. Before his words, there was nothing. But he spoke and it became reality. Trees, mountains, animals, people, the universe. Everything that you see is just from his words. That shows you that he doesn't have a limit, that he has all power. And yes, our words have that power too. You have to use wisdom. John chapter 1 and 1. Many of you probably already know this verse. It says, In the beginning was the Word. God has no beginning. He is infinite. There's no beginning or ending to Him. It says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Again, that was from his words. So here it says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. So that shows that everything is his. And we explained this verse before. It doesn't show two persons. It says word. And that word does not mean a person, but it means a thought or a plan. Because in the beginning was the plan, and the plan was with God. God knew the plan from the very start. And it says, and the word was with God. So here I am standing as a person. I have thoughts of I love my wife. I want to marry her, keep her. I'm going to keep my word. So what are your thoughts or your plans? You gotta keep that. God had a plan and provided. And those words are powerful, praise God. God created man and woman in his image. If you go to your bathroom or somebody that or some room that has a mirror. When you look at that, you know you are the image of God. Bow. Bow. Oh, beautiful. Let's see. Go back to Ephesians 4.29. But that which is good... use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So he's 
telling us? Yeah. No. My word is wonderful. Your word is wonderful. And when you speak, it should help encourage the goodness of God. It should help the world. This world is dark, filthy, evil. There's no profit in that. It's temporary. We want to focus on heaven. We want to work, focus on the wonderful God. And I have our words and who we are reflect him. Go ahead and read. Let the word of Christ Notice it's called word of God or word of Christ Is it separate? So here we have the word of Christ and then there's another book called the word of God Is there two separate? No Word of God and Word of Christ, Word of the Lord, it's all the same. Still one God. And here this word dwell means to live. The Word of Christ is not dead, it's a, it's a living word. This is why we have to have the Word of God in us. This is why it's called the Book of Life. It's its spirit. When you read it, it changes your life. There's no other book that can do that. Other books aren't living. You can discuss and, and research and read and read and read. Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly. all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. That's why I use my little guitar. A lot of of his church sings and they become inspired and start to feel his spirit. That's why David played the harp and wrote praises to God for that inspiration and to be able to share that. Okay, now. When that word of God hits your heart and you confess that you've done wrong, he can help change your life. He helps change you to be a better husband or a better family member or, or whatever it is in your life that you need improvement. Think on the wonderful word. I hope this vlog helped you. And praise him. It's all about him. God bless you.